Good morning. Before we kick off, let's get a bit of light in the room, guys, so I can see the faces. So when I grab some of the dummy, the participants, that we get a little later, I see where you are. That's a bit better. Good. Everybody, hold your right hand in front like this in handshaking position. Uncross your legs. Take a relax position. Right hand in front. Now, when I say the word now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone beside you, shake hands as if you're meeting for the first time, and keep pumping till I ask you to stop. Then you'll stop and freeze it, and we're going to analyse what's happening. You got that? You don't have time to think about this. Do it now. Pick anybody and pump, pump. Everybody, pump, 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 pump. Freeze it. Hold it. Stop. Hold it. Freeze it. Keep your hands locked. Keep them locked. Person whose hand is most on top is saying, I'll be the boss for the rest of the day. <laughs> now, when you meet people for the very first time, the first four minutes of meeting a new person, you decide pretty much 80% of your attitude about them, don't you? In fact, it's over 80%. You decide in the first four minutes of meeting somebody whether you're going to give them a fair go, a fair hearing, or whether you're going to reject them. And the first thing that's likely to happen is this thing called a handshake. And I'm going to try a couple of the front row here. You get one of three feelings when you lock hands with people. The first feeling is, that feels pretty good. I think you and I will get on pretty well. I think we could do business together. I think we're going to get on well. That was a good one. Let's try a second one. Okay. Just check my cash, see if it's still all there, yeah. I felt a bit intimidated then. Let's try the third one. Yes, you'll do anything I want, won't you? <laughs> now, actually, you all had roughly the same handshake, but you do get one of three gut feelings. It has to do with two things. One is the angle of the hand, and second is the power of the hand. Now, I'll demonstrate. Uh, let's get the, this gentleman in the front row. Can you come and join me up here, please? Yes, fellow looking concerned. Come up here. Here is your modern Western handshake. Here's how it looks. It's been in this position for about 2,000 years. Now, if you go back 4,000 years to the Roman era on vases, you would have seen it looking like this. That's its original position. It has several significances. So what would happen is that the troop leaders would meet after battle or training, and they're always men, so this has remained a male activity until recent times. When they would meet, they would do this. If his arm was stronger, it would go something like this, and you'd all say, he's got the upper hand. Upper hand is an ancient Roman expression. Now, if he's got the upper hand, it means his guys get the first crack at the whining, the dining, and the dancing. My guys have to wait. Now, if it goes the other way, my guys get first crack. If it's in the middle, it's 50-50. This was originally done squatting. Now we do it standing, so the fingers are below the wrist instead of above. But essentially, we have the same position. So that's why when the hands lock, if his hand is slightly on top, it doesn't have to be right on top, just a little bit. I'll get a feeling at a gut level, and we think this is hardwired because you've never been trained to decode this, I get a feeling he's coming on a bit heavy. And he feels like, yeah, I think I can dominate here. If it goes the other way, I feel like, yeah, I got, I got this sucker all lined up, haven't I, huh? Uh -huh. So how do you create rapport with a handshake? Here are the two rules. First, keep your hand absolutely straight. Second, and this takes a bit of practice, particularly if you're a female, give the same pressure you receive. So on a scale of 1 to 10, let's say that uh, a 10 is a really strong one, and a one's uh, four breakfast sausages, okay? Now let's try it again. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, yours is about a seven. Mine's about a seven too, so therefore it felt pretty good. Neither got the upper hand, the dominant hand, and that's why at a gut level, we both felt pretty good when we met. You know, I can see the look on your face, you felt okay. Yeah, that felt good. Yeah, that's very good. Now, what happens if you meet someone who's got, uh, let's say this time you're going to give me a nine, and I've only got a seven, so give me a nine in intensity. Whoa, now the hand will go straight on top. I've got to respond with an extra 20% just to level it up. Because if I don't, he's going to have one up on me before we start. He'll know it, and I'll know it, but not a word's been said. Make sense? Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Now, there are more connections between your brain and the palm of your hands than any other body part. Did you know this? More connections between the brain and the palm of the hands, including men, ladies, than any other body part. So clearly the palms have evolved as a very important part of, of human beings, and they are. They make your bed, they brush your hair, they do small artwork, they do handshakes, they play the piano. In fact, they do more things than most other body parts. But here's my question to you. When you're dealing with people where you want to persuade them, convince them, get them on site, you want to get them to say yes to whatever you're proposing, whether it's that job or that date, or just to get your idea and accept it. Where are your palms as you're talking? 
Now, this is something that most people have never considered. Never. You know, after the session, you'll consider it, you'll think about it. And later today, you'll start to realise things about why people respond to you in the way they do that you've never thought about. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the same thing three times. I'm going to change only what I do with the palms of my hands. Now, I keep my body fairly still, so I don't use any other body signals to, to uh, infiltrate this. And I'll keep my voice as close to the same as I can. I say as close as I can because we know that when you change your body language, it's hardwired in your brain to change the way you sound. So I'll try to keep it as close as I can sound-wise. And I'll use exactly the same words. Same instruction three times. Now, your task is to decide, uh, do you accept what I'm saying? Do you want to do it or do you reject me? Do you want to fight me or do you want to go along with it? Do you want to say yes or no? That's all you've got to do. Okay, we're clear on this? Here we go. First instruction. Now, don't do this. Just imagine this is what we're going to do. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask the people who are sitting in these seats here, I'll invite you to come and sit on the side of the room, please. And I'll invite the people here to take their seats. Now, those in the back of the room can come forward to the front, and those of you in the front can sit anywhere you choose. Now, raise your hand if you feel OK about what I'm asking. Who feels OK? Raise your hand. I say, just about all of you are prepared to do what I want. You don't even know what it is, but you're prepared to get up and do what I want because you feel like I won't threaten you, I won't intimidate you, Ellen won't make me look silly. This could be a bit of fun. That's what your mind's thinking because I use a signal that appealed to your ancient brain. Let's try the second instruction. Same words, same voice, changing only the palm. Here we go. Now, I'm going to ask the people sitting on this side of the room here. I invite you to come and take these seats. And the people there, if you can sit over here, please. Uh, those at the back, come forward, please, and sit here. And those in the front can sit anywhere they like. Give me a word that goes with this. What are you feeling? A word. Okay, who feels like you're getting an order? Raise your hand if you've got an order. I think about this. So are you telling me that all I have to do is change my palms from an upward position where you wanted to do anything I wanted without question? Now I've turned it over. Now you're saying to yourself, hang on a minute, this guy's giving me an order. Well, maybe I don't want to do that. I'm an independent. I'll just check it all out. Make me laugh, funny guy. So now how many of you are resisting? Let's try the third approach. Now, I'm going to ask the people sitting in these seats here, if you can come and sit over this side of the room, please, and those in those seats uh, can sit here. In the back of the room, if you can come forward, please, and sit here. And those in the front can go anywhere you like. Now, give me a word that goes with this, a word. Now, not a gesture, a, a word. <laughs> I guess that was a word. <laughs> What's, what are you feeling with this? Well, this is more than an order. This is a directive. You have no choice, and you're an idiot. So we tested this in a very simple way. We've got an audience to sit in a room like this. We've got a speaker to present a proposal. It took around 20 minutes. They had to convince the audience to go along with the proposal. But the speaker was instructed to do the same thing three times with three audiences, same demographic. We just changed the audiences. Now, the first time the speaker spoke, primarily using palm up position, like this. So that was the way the proposal would work. Here's the bottom line. It would work for you, sir. It would work for you, ma'am. It would work in Australia. It would work in America. It would work, and that's the way they did it for the first proposal. We move that audience out, put in a second audience now. Same presentation is given to the same demographic audience now, but a different audience using palm down. Here's the way the deal works. There's the bottom line. It would work for you. It would work for you. It would work in America. It would work in the United States and in Iceland. Move that audience out, put in a third one. Now give the same presentation using finger pointing. Here's the way it works. The bottom line's there and there. It'll work for you, 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 and you, and America, Australia, and Africa. Now we survey all three audiences looking for two things. First, with a simple test, how, can they, how much could they recall of what the deal was about? In other words, we're looking for how much were they listening to the deal as opposed to judging the speaker? Secondly, from a list of adjectives, we ask them to tick the adjectives that best describe how you felt about the speaker. Do you reckon there was any difference? You already know the answer, don't you? You know the answer already without even seeing the results. That the palm up speaker had up to 40% more retention of the deal than the palm down speaker. The palm up speaker had the best adjective. Lay back, friendly, humorous, engaging. As soon as the palms turned over, authority, management, telling me what to do, pushing. When the finger came out, nobody could remember much and they got the worst adjectives about that person. Now here's my question for you. What's your prominent position? You have a dominant position of one of these and which is yours? Most people have never considered it, but you've got one that you are using primarily when you're dealing with others. Now, is it up? Is it over? It's a finger. Now, we know the palm down, historically, is a power signal. There's more power, in fact, four times more power in your hands facing down than up. Uh, think of famous examples like uh, Adolf Hitler, the Nazi salute when Hail Hitler. 
and it frightened everybody. How would he have gone if he had gone, Hail Hitler? Nobody's going to follow Hail Hitler. That's scary. That's submission. Now, here's the good news about this, that you can change and modify your hand signals with a little practice. Now, when you first start to do this, what happens if later today or tonight you suddenly discover you're a finger pointer? Like you're talking to a few of your friends that are here and you've forgotten all about it and you're talking and they're watching, looking at your hand. And there it is, hitting these silly idiots on the head, knocking you into submission. Now, the thing about body language, it's an outward reflection of your emotional condition. All body language shows is how you're feeling. Whatever attitude or emotion you're feeling is likely to be reflected in the gesture, movement, or posture. Now, the reverse is true as well. If you intentionally take certain positions or postures, then you'll start to feel the emotions that go with it. For example, everybody copy this. It's like a form of praying, just lightly tap it back and forth. Now, put a little smile on your face. No teeth. Call out your attitude. How do you feel when you do this? Yeah, you're actually a good plan, aren't you? You're pretty smart. You are in charge. In fact, the word that goes with this is confidence. If you're feeling confident, like I know what I'm talking about, I'm in charge. I'm an expert. This is one that may appear. You may unconsciously use it. But if you intentionally use this in situations where you feel intentional or nervous, it does two things. First is when you intentionally take the gesture as you just did, you start to feel more confident in charge. <sighs> charge my emotions. Importantly, the person who sees you do it, it's a feeling. You seem to know what you're about. You know what it was? You know, when I first met that, that guy or that woman, they just seemed to have a confident attitude. Well, no, they were probably intentionally doing it to create that, to reassure themselves and to make you feel good. Fake it until you make it. Now, if you keep on doing this as part of your repertoire, eventually you will constantly, when you do this, you will feel confident about what you're talking about, even when you don't. So you can go into politics. So here's my question for you. What is your dominant position? Palm up, palm over, finger point. Think about life today, in business and in personal relationships, it's all first about people. Does somebody buy you? Now, if somebody buys you, particularly the first four minutes, they're forming up to 90% of their opinion about you. If they buy you, there's a good chance they'll buy whatever goes with you. What goes with you is what you want them to do. The other thing is also true, if they don't buy you, they're not gonna buy whatever goes with you, even if it's a good idea. They don't get that connection. They feel that you don't like them or you're threatening or intimidating. Suddenly they just don't want to say yes to whatever you're suggesting, even if this is a good idea. So you can practice palms up where you want to get cooperation. Now, sometimes you might want a bit of authority. You'll turn the palm over. So, for example, if the fire alarm went off in this building, I would say, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go by that exit, that exit, and that exit, and that exit. I wouldn't say, now, here's what we need to do. We're going to go... Because you, you, it'd be every man for himself if I did this. So by intentionally practicing position, suddenly with the palm up, you'll find that people start feeling like they're drawn to you. In fact, as we've been talking, I've been drawing you to, I've been doing the Obama hug. We want to help the American people. We want you to come here. Yeah, we love you. Like your mum or dad, cuddling you. Like I think of his predecessor, he said, we want to help everybody. We want to help, help, help you, you and you. Body language and outward reflection of emotions. If you intentionally take certain positions and practice them, it suddenly changes how people perceive you and it changes your own physiology. You start to feel different about yourself. That's the great thing about it. You can do things on purpose, which gives you a greater chance of getting yes to the job, the proposal, to the idea, to the date, or better. <laughs>